Hey everybody, Chef Jed here at the PS Seasoning Culinary Center, and today we're gonna be making some brats with our very own master meat crafter and sausage maker, Mark Haney. Hi, nice to be here. So we are going to make some pork brats today. Yes. We've got some pork butt cut up, ready to go in the freezer, about to grind. We're going to be making beer cheddar jalapeno brats. Correct. So this is a blend that we make here at PS Seasoning. It comes complete. Um, there already is beer flavoring in the seasoning blend, but we're gonna take that up a notch and add extra beer to it. Kind of a double beer brat note. Um, jalapenos are in the blend, and then we're gonna add some high temp cheddar cheese with it as well. And it's gonna be a phenomenal product when we're complete. So we're doubling up on some of those flavors, but we wanna make sure that this seasoning blend by itself is okay. We're just trying to make it a little different, show you some different techniques with, with some additions that you might wanna to add to your sausage. Correct. First things first, we've got our grinder staged here. Uh, we've got the auger in, and we're gonna do two grinds on the meat today, correct? We are, we're gonna grind first through a 3 8 plate, to even a half inch to break down the meat fibers a little bit. Then we're going to add our, uh, we're gonna add a smaller plate in here, we're gonna go through an eighth inch and grind through that. Normally I would add the spices and grind through the second time with the spices, but because we have larger specks of jalapeno here, I wanna keep those whole. So we're gonna just mix it in by hand after we're done grinding today. And we'll also add the high temp cheese and the beer at that time as well. Pork we're using is pork butt. Yes. So we got that boned out and we got chunks made up. We're going to stay in the refrigerator, keep it nice and cold. You wanna keep your meat above, you know, below 40 degrees all the time. Closer to 30 degrees is all the better. Keep it nice and cold. So here we have our uh, pork. We had it in the freezer. It's got a nice chill on it, just a little bit crusty, not bad at all. So it's gonna be nice and cold. This is uh, 12 and a half pounds we're making today. So we did half of a bag of seasoning. The seasoning does 25 pounds. So we just divided everything into half. So we're gonna start by throwing this up here. And then we will start the grinding process. This might be a basic point, but why are you starting with a larger grind as opposed to just that final grind size that you're looking for? So it's easier to break down the meat when you do it in different sections than trying to go through um, such a small plate right away. You can start having some schmear going on mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So this just keeps real nice knife cuts on your meat by doing it through a couple times. And again, if it does get stuck, you got the, the plunger you can push down on, but as long as you feed it right, you won't have to do that. So I'm seeing a lot of white in our grind here, which is the fat and separate from the protein. Correct. What fat ratio are you specifically looking for when we're doing a sausage? So fat to lean ratio for a bratwurst is normally about 75% lean, 25% fat. And okay. You can go more than that if you want to. You can even go to 80% lean, but you gotta have some of that fat in there for flavor or it won't cook up and taste great. And texture if I'm not mistaken, texture, right? Yep. Awesome. Yep, and that's why we're gonna keep this next grind a little bit coarser. Absolutely. It won't be so fine, so yep. that'll be good. So then here we are dumping the uh, the meat, I'm not gonna put all of it in there because it's not gonna fit. Oh, looks like it's coming out really nice. Again, you'll know right away if it's not coming out like this, that you got either your knife on backwards, it's not tight enough, or something like that. You wanna get that nice commodity like that. And you can still see a nice separation of protein and fat there, which means our our meat is still nice and cold, Correct. which is really ideal for what really we're doing. Ideal for what we're doing. Yep. The colder you keep it, the better appearing meat you're going to have. It's going to look fresher, and it's just going to be nice to work with. Cold to work with, but nice to work with. All right, Mark, so what makes a brat different from other sausages you might see, like a German-style sausage or a Polish? What makes a brat a brat? So a bratwurst is, you know, obviously an old German product that uh, has been around for many years. Um, it does have a certain identity of seasonings that have to be with it and things like that to be considered a bratwurst. The bratwurst terminology has gotten pretty broad over the years. Mm -hmm. um, but, so it's just the seasoning that makes of it. And also, brat can only have a certain amount of water content in it, um, which is like up to 3%. And that's a little different than sausage. You can have more and things like that. So there's just little different nuances to it. But this is gonna be, um, we call it the jalapeno and cheddar bratwurst. It could really be jalapeno and cheddar sausage. Mm -hmm. so but for all intents and purposes, yeah. the, the term brat, is recognized and well known and yes especially in our parts of the world yes. Midwest is brats king no yeah. doubt because we're now going to do the mixing process we got our pork all ground and this is what we ground into we're going to put it into a little larger lug we're going to add the seasoning the cheese and the beer just going to give us more room to mix everything up so it's otherwise it's got to be careful it doesn't flip out of the 
size and all that stuff. So this just makes it a little bit easier for us. <clears throat> now this is our uh, beer jalapeno and cheddar, basically beer jalapeno seasoning, the cheddar's from the high temp cheese we're adding. As you can see, we got some coarse ingredients in here. There's some jalapeno peppers, and I wanna keep these jalapeno peppers nice and coarse, which is why I didn't run them through the grinder. I wanna be able to see that visual in the brat when it's done. And this so, is gonna have some kick to it, because I can see seeds in there too. Yes, this is jalapeno, so the, the whole flavor, jalapeno. The flavor is real. Gonna be real. So <laughs> I mean, you can smell the jalapeno just from doing yeah. this. We're getting yep. that. When I was measuring that yeah. out, it does. Well, this obviously has salt, sugar, some spices. There's also a potato starch in here, which is a natural binder. Um, so that'll help us keep the moisture in the product, make a nice, tender, juicy brat for us. Just a nice little thing that we add to make you a high superior product. So, so basically, it's a one-stop shop. You got all the seasonings, yep. takes a lot of that guesswork out of it, and all, all available at psseasoning.com. So we'll just dump the meat, the seasoning all over the meat. Really no, uh, no rhyme or reason. We'll get rid of that. We're gonna add all the high temp cheese. So we're adding one pound to 12 and a half pounds of meat, basically two pounds to 25. You can go more, you can go less, but that's just a really good starting point. We're gonna add the beer. Normally here you could add some water. Yeah, we got good jalapeno flavor going on there. It's, it's getting up your, get that, so. stinging the, the sinuses. <laughs> yep. So we're adding the dark amber lager beer here. Um, you can use any flavor you like. I recommend the darker, bolder flavor you go, the more flavor it's gonna give you into your brat. So we're adding mm -hmm. one bottle to 12 and a half pounds of pork. Um, that's a good way to go. And you can go a little more too if you want. Um, but you can see how that's foaming up in there nice. We don't want to overmix. We're doing a bratwurst. We're not doing a, we're not doing a hot dog or anything like that. We're mixing this key to break down the protein. We just want to distribute the spices. The more we keep that from being too extract too much yeah. protein, there you go. then you know we start breaking down the texture of the brat. We want it to be a nice, easy bite when we uh, go to make it. Now, another little tip is you added the beer, you added the cheese, and you added the seasoning all at once. Correct rather than adding one mixing, adding the other mixing. Yep. Because that, again, would defeat the purpose and it would become too tacky and you'd extract too much protein Correct. and yep. that would affect texture. In this case of the mixing, less is more. And uh, when you start seeing the good distribution that we are getting here, um, you can see the cheese all over mm -hmm. the place, the jalapeno all over the place. Looks evenly spread out. Yep, you're not seeing any pockets of seasoning. You see some, just kind of get it, rub it down, and uh, you just kind of punch it down a little bit. Usually two to three minutes is a good mixing time. Obviously they can get uh, mixing machines to do this for you. A batch this size, you just go in and do it by hand. Get dirty. Yep. Well, you can smell the beer flavor. You can smell yeah. the jalapeno. You obviously can see the cheese. We're gonna have a very good, uh, good product here. So when it's all done, just kind of put it together like that. And we are ready to go to the stuffer. So when you get all the meat in there, this is a 15 pound stuffer here. So we were able to get all that in there, a little bit more. Just push it down, get as much air out of there as you can, and then go back to the stuffer. Awesome. Okay, so we have filled our stuffer up with the meat. We're gonna start cranking that down until the meat comes out of the stuffing horn. And then we're gonna back off as it slowly starts to get to the end. <clears throat> Just wanna get it to where it's there. And then we'll, uh, start threading our casings onto the horn. Oh, that's so cool. Even in yep. this uh, synthetic horn or plastic, plastic clear. Um, clear. you can see all the chunks of cheese yep. and jalapenos. jalapenos. It's gonna be a very nice looking brat with it. We're using a natural hog casing for Correct. this, right? And that's yes. a classic sausage bratwurst casing that we're gonna use, right? Correct, yep. Um, this is a fresh hog casing, as you was talking about, this is a 3235. Probably the most common size used for making bratwurst. Um, there's 2932s, there's 3538s. And that's all measured in that's millimeters. That's millimeters. Measured in millimeters, yeah. Okay. And it's obviously not exact, it's a natural product. So, mm -hmm. But this will make you, depending upon how long we link them, could make a three to a palm brat, could make a four to a palm brat. We could kind of do whatever you want, but this is kind of a normal size to go with. So you can buy these at PS Seasoning. Um, we have them in home pack hogs for 25 pounds of meat, and we also have them for doing 125 pounds of meat. So it depends what you're doing, so. Yeah. So we've uh, pre-soaked these casings in cold water for a couple hours, and then we put them in uh, warm water <clears throat> to uh, just kind of help loosen them up a little bit. So what I do is I get one strand out, and these are pretty good sized strands here. 
Uh, you're gonna do that little water trick I saw, right? Yes. Okay, so trick. you're gonna kind of trap a little bit in there, and what's that gonna do for you? So what I do is when I get to the end of the hog casing, is open it up, and then just dip it in the water so you get, you can see the water start going down the casing. So what that does is help loosen up the casing and uh, helps it slide onto the horn good. But the biggest thing is I'm running water through that casing so it kind of gets throughout any sticky spots that might be in the casing or something like that. As, you thread it as through. I'm threading it on there, yep, it'll push that water. You can see it pushing right through the casing there. And it kind of naturally untangles it for you too Correct. as it goes through. Yep. Yeah, so this will be a pretty good size strand here. It'll probably stuff most of what's in the stuffer, which is nice. You can make a knot. <clears throat> you can tie it around, make a knot. You can leave it as is. I'm going to leave this as is. Try to keep some of the air out of there. We try to bring the casing forward so the air goes out the back while we're stuffing. So here we go. Again, you're just cranking the pressure so it starts coming out. And you don't want to overfill the casing. You want to let it pull itself off. This is looking good here. Do you need my assistance kind of sure. wrangling this a little bit? Yep. I'll keep it in a coil for you. So obviously the smaller size horn that you go with, the harder this process becomes because you're putting all that pressure through a smaller tube. So this is a nice, looks like a three quarter inch tube we're using here. Um, you'll be able to see that that's fitting this casing really good. So, and now we're getting some air backed up here. So, so what I do when we get to uh, points like this, you see that air pocket? Just kind of tap it a little bit and then the air goes away. So, and then just kind of keep stuffing again. Little tip there. That was a little tip, but my mind was blown. Yep. Is, that, is that weird? That was very exciting. I love those little kitchen tips. And yes. when it comes to sausage making and breakdown and all those little tricks, they add up to making the job so much easier. So that again, was cool. I go again, that. the air's getting a little heavy. So Watch just, this, guys. Just knock the back of the knife on there and lets that air come right out. Good grief. Puts a little hole in the casing. That's not a problem. That's not a big deal there, but that's how you get that air out of there. Making a nice link here. We should be getting near the end because I can feel it on the stuffer. Yeah, maybe a little bit yet. And there's that air pocket again, but it's going okay yet for now. I've sprinkled it with water just so it would get a little unstuck from the table. You don't want to use too much just because then you'll get water everywhere and it'll be really messy, but just keep the table and the sausage lubricated so it doesn't stick. Okay, there we are at the end. They can't go any further. We were able to get that out of one strand, which is very nice. Pretty impressive, really. <clears throat> so we'll take that off and we'll just cut some of this casing down here. Back this off to get the pressure off the horn. So now we're gonna link. So we're gonna make some room here. Stop with the end, start with the end we just uh, finished with. So this is the pinch method, pinch and twist. Pinch four inches, five inches, whatever you wanna do, and then twist forward. How many times do you spin in and About is there a logic four to, to five, it? no logic. You just kind of do it so. Just to make sure it's yeah, sealed Yeah, make off. sure it's sealed. If you go too much, you can actually tighten the casing up and it'll make it burst. Mm -hmm. Yep, be gentle. Don't be in a rush. When you're in a rush, things start to happen. So not all of the meat is going to get into casing, right? Correct, yeah. You can see there's a little bit in the horn there. There's probably four ounces at the bottom of the stuffer there too. Correct, yep. That's not trash. No, definitely not. I mean, that's my favorite part. We get done with this part now, we make that into patties and we throw them on the grill or the frying pan and you got a beautiful little sandwich. Yeah, or you could just eat it by itself. Saute that up in the morning with some eggs you or something too, like that. You, bet. <clears throat> you can make them a little bit bigger. If they're tight, then they'll kind of help out a little bit there too, so. It's also kind of a personal preference. Like if you're put, putting it on a bun, you obviously want a size that's Right. more bun friendly but yep. if you if you just eat sausage you know grill them up and throw them on yep. your plate you might Don't want a slightly any, larger yep. one you can see i got smaller ones larger ones there's really no in between whatever you want to do there you can make them your own size mm -hmm. these are homemade so we're not trying to make anything uniformity know, is uniform, you know. the goal but it's not yep. absolutely necessary that looks good so these are nice size brats here they're going to be good eating mm. so you can start to see once we get them linked you can start to see the the pepper in there, the yeah. cheese, I mean, it's got really good definition. Now, do you need to let these sit in the fridge overnight or anything like that? Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to leave them sit overnight. You can put them in a pan. And we're um, obviously not gonna eat all these. Today. Right, exactly. And we'll let the flavors marry a little bit, you know, better, but by all means, you can also 
crank this up right away and now we're getting we're a little bit tight on my casing here so you're gonna have a break once in a while just peel it off like that that is still good to use as is there as so like yeah. yep now we're getting towards the end to the end but luckily we're ending on an even one so you just twist right. it the other so you way twist it the other direction on the last link only. The last link there, yep, a little bit smaller. There you go. You can also tie it off with a string if you want to, but okay. that's fine. And so here's the meat we have left here. And then there's some in the stuffer. We'll make patties out of that. And the stuffing process is done, so. Awesome. Next is on to uh, the grill. Yeah, we got a brand new Weber that we need to break in, so I think this is the perfect opportunity. Sounds good, I'm looking forward to some finished product. Let's get fired up. arrived at the best part. We're about to eat these, but I just want to explain a little bit about how I cook these. Um, I went on an indirect heat charcoal grill for about 15 minutes until they got to a temperature of 160 internal temperature. We are working with ground pork, a fresh sausage, so that is the temperature we want to reach. Um, and we went with direct grilling, or directly on the grill, no boiling, anything Correct. before that, right? Correct. I'm not a fan of boiling your brats before you Put them on the grill. Um, you cook up a lot. You cook out a lot of the flavor. You cook, cook out a lot of the fat that's in the product that we worked hard to put into the bratwurst. Mm -hmm. So let your grill do the cooking. Don't cook it on high heat. Cook it indirect. Cook yep. it. Turn off, and um, you're going to find yourself having a much better product and a more tender casing as well. Awesome. So we're going to get that good snap. Hopefully, all the flavors combine for us. Mm -hmm. So what we did here is we grilled these up, and then we made some grilled onions, which I caramelized in a little bit of butter. We got some sliced jalapenos. We're going to drizzle a little bit of ranch on there, and we're going to be ready to eat. This is a party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To another successful sausage making yes, endeavor. Chef. We did very well with this product. <laughs> you can take a look at, uh, um, you see the cheese, you see the jalapenos, the other spices in there. Uh, we've got a very nice cooked product. And now for the best part, really we look. have some ranch dressing on here with our onions, and let's take a bite. I'm stoked. Mm. That beer flavor mm -hmm. is popping. Mm -hmm. but, and the cheddar you got there and the onion. Jalapeno. That's awesome. It's very good. good That's job, really job. good. A lot of fun. It's well rounded. You, you made sausage before? A couple times <laughs> we've, we've done it. So Man. We're, that's we're really forward, great. Uh, more ventures with you going forward and yeah. uh, some more fun products to make. Well, thank you so much again for showing us. And okay. again, from the PS Seasoning Culinary Center, I'm Chef Jed. Master Meat Crafter Mark Haney, you have yourself a great day. We'll see you again soon.